So in Seekers of the Storm, our antagonist is the False Sun. And the False Sun is a construct of three parts. The first is Providence. False Sun is made in his image by Lemurians that are very scared to be without Providence. Aurelianite, with her captors gone, is now reaching beyond her cage. She's trying to get out and she has no jailers anymore to keep her inside. So we're seeing her exploring new abilities in this DLC. And then right before False Sun is truly born, Mithrix comes in with his Beads of Fealty holders and they corrupt him. To me, he's a very sad boy. Um, he got betrayed. We had a lot of fun making him and he's very crucial to the lore. I'm really excited about when players find out who he is actually in the game. We come in as fans of the franchise that are trying to make good on a thing. We always fall back on the idea of like, is this interesting and is this fun? I wanted them to feel like everything around them is supporting the storytelling. I want them to stop and look at the environment be like, wow, this is pretty. I know the combat is always intense, but that's what I want them to do. <laughs> the various settings and location that we chose for this DLC is actually very heavily based on lore. Sometimes we would like to pick a enemy and we want to build a environment around it. And that's a thing where Risk of Rain do a lot, where for example, in Abyssal Depths, the special enemy there is Imp, and there's actually a lot of lore attached to it. So we kind of want to keep that consistent for our new DLC stages as well. As I was writing for Seekers of the Storm, uh, for every log that came out, there were 10 dead logs that never will see the light of day. But you know, out of those 10, Three of them, they just weren't in the right place at the right time. If someone is out there who just wants a bunch of content, cool, we got you covered. For the person who wants more maps, cool, we got you covered. For the person who wants more survivors, cool, we got you covered. Items too, you name it. The design intent for day and night version for Verdant Fall is that we want the player to be able to experience the different take on a familiar stage that they've already been through. So the day and night version of Verdant Fall actually started as a personal project of one of our team members. And she had this brilliant idea of, you know, what if we make a stage different and we make a variant of it and then we add some more flavor as well. And that's why she came to me with the night version of Burton Falls. And after we look at it, I was like, yeah, this is really cool. Uh, we should do more. There are props that's very specific to the night version and makes more sense. And the skybox is totally different. And we added new areas for the night version that player are not always get to access to. I've been really excited to work with the team and help plan the next five or 10 years for this franchise. There's a lot of directions that we could go in it. Uh, pretty much every direction is interesting. There's High Court, there's Heretics, there's the two brothers. Where do they come from? Are there more of them? What is the space sickness that keeps them locked and isolated on this planet? Does that apply to all Cyclopses? Um, there's a ton of mysteries to be dug out in this world and I look forward to pulling every thread I can find.